Hello and welcome to the 2016 HERS-1 training. In this video we will cover sampling for both new construction and alterations. Our overall training goal will be to understand the sample group process and be able to apply it to practical situations. So what is sampling? Sampling is a process by which a HERS rater randomly selects one dwelling unit from a group of up to seven dwelling units. Now they're gonna test that house, and if that house or unit passes, then the whole group is assumed to pass. Uh, the assumption here is that if one dwelling unit passes, uh, and this is after the installing contractor has already tested all homes, you as a HERS rater are just verifying their test results, so if one dwelling unit passes, then the other ones should be built to the same standards and should also pass. Uh, if dwelling units cannot meet the sampling requirements, then the HERS rater will have to test 100% of the dwelling units in the sample group. So there's a little bit of a safety built in there, um, and we'll cover that uh, failure process. If you get a failure during your testing, what do you do next? Um, we're gonna cover that here in a minute. Uh, but again, this is based on the installing contractors already done their tests for the CF2Rs, um, so the testing is already supposedly done. You're verifying that test, and if the test that you perform randomly passes, then the rest of them should be in a passing state. So in regards to sampling, there are different stages of the sampling process. So when it comes to model and plan testing, 100% um, of the models and the plans have to be tested individually before the HERV rater can start sampling. Um, homes can be considered the same model or plan if they have the same basic layout or floor plan, the same energy design, and the same compliance features, meaning they have to be built the same way. Um, if those stay the same, then there are unique plans or models. So each unique plan will have to be tested individually on its own um, without being able to be sampled or anything else before the sampling starts taking place. If for some reason the builder only builds an X amount of, of plans. So for example, let's say the builder has five different plans they're going to build overall, but in the beginning they only build three. Then the initial three that they build will have to be tested individually, and then if they end up building the additional two, those will be tested individually as they come along. So that's not a problem. Um, and the reason we do this is because it allows the builder to identify and correct any potential construction flaws or practices in the build out of each model or plan. So once you've uh, taken care of the model testing, you've got those identified, you've tested them, or you've identified that they're gonna be built later on and you'll, you'll test them then, you can start determining which other dwelling units can be included in your sample group. So in order for dwelling units to be included in a group, they must meet these three criteria. They have to be built within the same subdivision they have to have the same installing contract subcontractor for that measure that you're testing. Uh, and they all, all the dwelling units have to have the same associated HERS measures. So same subdivision, uh, production builders will build subdivisions or projects. All the homes have to be in that same subdivision. Um, for con subcontractors, um, you're going to have possibly an insulation contractor, uh, an electrical contractor, an HVAC contractor. So they don't need to be the same, but you need to have just one HVAC contractor that does all of the duct leakage testing and refrigerant charge and all of that. One insulation contractor that does all the insula insulation installations uh, and so on. And then HERS measures. That means that this house, when you're gonna do your HERS testing, they all have to have the same HERS test. They have to have, for example, duct leakage, airflow, fan watch draw, refrigerant charge. If you've got another plan and it has duct leakage, airflow, fan watch draw, refrigerant charge, and QII, uh, those are different sets of measures and they cannot be within the same sample group. You'd have to have two separate sample groups uh, with those homes in it. Uh, uh, CFI systems or central fan integrated ventilation systems, those are considered a HERS measure. So even though it's not a, a credit, it's not a HERS test, um, because they oftentimes only uh, appear on some of the homes within the subdivision, uh, the Energy Commission decided to treat that as a HERS measure. So if the system does have, or if the dwelling unit does have a CFI system, that will be considered a unique HERS measure, and that will have to be accounted for when you're doing your sample grouping. 
there are two ways to group homes. You have an open method and a closed method. Um, the difference between the two is the fact with the open method, you have up to six months or 180 days uh, to basically group up to five homes. So one home is tested, up to four more homes are grouped with that one test within the six month period. With the closed method, you can group up to seven homes, meaning one home tested up to six more homes uh, grouped with one test. However, the group will be closed the moment, the, the day the test is completed. So basically, after that test is completed, um, you cannot identify more homes to group with, with the group of up to seven homes. Therefore, it means that they have to have all the CF2Rs from the subcontractor and all the lots identified to be in the group the day of the test. Unlike the open method, that basically you can keep adding to group um, within the six month, whether the homes were identified or even they were ready or not. If during the project uh, there is a change in the subcontractor for one of the HERS measures, uh, the builder must notify the HERS rater and then all the sampling for that uh, measure, for those features, uh, has to be stopped. Um, so any homes that that contractor was responsible for can still be grouped together, um, but you now can't create uh, any uh, new sample groups with uh, any homes from the new contractor because the contractor is going to take over they'll uh, create new uh, sample groups so for the uh, original installing contractor you can continue to group together any homes that they were responsible for and then for the new contractor when the new contractor takes over you will need to start new sample groups with those homes uh, you do not need to uh, do new model testing Model testing only happens once at the very beginning of the project, uh, but you'll just need to start new sample groups. So we cannot mix and match different subcontractors for the same measure. So here's the general steps to basically calculate uh, the number of homes that you would have to test for a project when you're using sampling. Uh, these are the general steps. Um, we'll talk about a couple of examples after this slide. And then in addition to that, there's a practical exercise to help you practice this process um, that's actually separate from the PowerPoint and it's available to you in the learning management system. So these are the general calculation uh, steps. So first of all, you wanna subtract the number of individually tested model and plans from the total number of homes. That's because you wanna test those models separately and those are not part of your sampling. You want to divide the remaining number of homes by the sampling group size, whether it's five or seven, whether it's open or closed. So that's going to divide them up um, in the sampling group size that you want. To the result of step two, add the number of individually tested models plan you originally subtracted in step one. Um, so after you figure out how many tested homes you're going to test based on the sampling group size that you're going to use, you're going to add back in the number of lots that you subtracted for the models because you got to test those individually. And then after that, you round up. So if during step two, you came up with a decimal, um, you always round up. You always round up. You're never going to test you know, half a house. Um, and so you always want to round up in your final result. Um, so the resulting number will be the total number of homes you will need to test in order to certify the whole project. So that's a way for you to calculate, obviously, in the long run, how many homes will you need to test in that particular project for it to be 100% compliant. So this is our first example, single family construction. And those are the variables. So all the homes in the project have the same HERS measures. There's 40 total homes in the project. There's four unique model and plans, and you're gonna be using the open sampling method. Now, because all the homes have the same HERS measures, we'll be able to group all the homes together. So first step, subtract the individually four tested model and plans from the total amount of 40. So 40 minus 4 equals 36, because you're going to be testing those four models individually. Now, you're going, to be divide, you're going to be dividing the remaining 36 by 5, because we're using the open sampling method. So because of that, you can only sample up to four homes, making it a group of five. You're going to divide the 36 by groups of five, because that's going to be the sampling method that you want to use. So 36 divided by 5 equals 7.2. Now, add to our result from step 2, 7.2. The number of models was 4. So if you add four, the original four to the 7.2 that you calculated in step two, that's gonna give you 11.1. And because we said we wanna round up, 
that 11.1 .1 becomes 12. Um, in order to certify the whole project, we'll need to test 12 homes in total in that project using the open sampling method and assuming there are four models or unique models and plans in the project. Now this is a different example. Um, just like before, it's still single family, but in this particular example, the plans have different HERS measures associated uh, within those particular plans, so they cannot be grouped together. Um, so they have different models, plans, uh, like I said, different combination of our measures. Uh, plan 1 has 20 units in the project, Plan 2 has 10 units, Plan 3 has 17 units, units and we're using the closed sampling method. And like I said, because they have different HERS measures, uh, we'll have to group each plan type separately. So the first step is subtract one lot as the individually tested model plan from each plan type. So you're going to remove one plan for plan 1, 2, and 3, which takes down the number to 19, 9, and 16. Then you're going to divide each number, each, each plan number, uh, by 7 because we're using the closed sampling method. So 19 divided by 7 equals 2.7. Uh, 19, oh, I apologize, 9 divided by 7 equals 1.2. And then 16 divided by 7 equals 2.2. Now, in step three, we're going to add each result from step two to one model plan we originally subtracted from step one. So 2.7 for plan one becomes 3.7, 1.2 from plan two becomes 2.2, .2, and 2.2 .2, uh, for plan three becomes 3.2. And then all we do is round up. So for plan one, we're going to have four lots. For plan two, we're going to have three lots. And for plan three, we're going to have four lots. You add those numbers together, that's going to give you 11. Um, so in order to certify the whole project, we'll need, to, we'll, we'll need to test 11 homes in total in that particular project. So now let's take a look at multifamily buildings. So the rules for multifamily sampling are the same as single family. Uh, each dwelling unit within that multifamily building will be tested and or sampled as if it were a single family home. Uh, the same model testing require, requirements apply, uh, as well as we have uh, the option to choose either a open or closed sample group. So for our first example, all dwelling units will have the same HERS measures. This means that we will be able to group uh, all the buildings together. Uh, dwelling units from one building can be grouped with dwelling units from a separate building. Uh, so we are going to have seven buildings total in the project. Uh, there will be two uh, models uh, within those buildings. So each, each building only has two different plan types. Uh, there will be 10 dwelling units per building, uh, and we will be using the open sampling method. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for the multifamily, everything's done as a dwelling unit, uh, not as a building as a whole. So first, we need to take our total count and subtract for the models uh, that we will be testing. So we have a total of 70, seven buildings, 10 units per building. Uh, so we subtract two for our model tests and that will leave us with 68. Uh, now, because we are using this, the open sampling method, we will need to divide 68 by five and that'll leave us with 13.6. We now need to add back in the uh, two uh, dwelling units that we use for our model tests. Uh, and we'll, so we'll add that to the 13.6 uh, and that will give us 15.6. Uh, and we always are going to round up. So 15.6 rounded up is 16 dwelling units. Uh, so to certify that whole project, uh, we will need to test a minimum of 16 dwelling units in total. Remember, we can always do uh, less than the sample group allows. So sample groups allowing five, we can always have groups of smaller two, three, four. Um, so we may do more dwelling units, but for this one, a minimum of 16 will get us to where we need to be. In our second example, we're going to do uh, each building type that uses a different HERS measure. So now we can't group dwelling units between buildings. Um, we have to only group dwelling units within a specific building type. Uh, so for this example, building type A is going to be two buildings of the project, so a total of 20 units in the project. Building type B is only going to be a single building, which will account for 10 units in the project. 
and building type C is four buildings and it will be 40 units in the project. Uh, now these all will have a single uh, model within them. Uh, so as you see in the next slide, we'll, we'll get into subtracting those, but we only have one model uh, per building type. Uh, so we'll also be using the closed sampling method, so a one and seven, uh, and we will not be able to group, as I mentioned, uh, between building type. So for this example here, uh, we need to again subtract those model tests from each building type uh, total. So building type A, 20 minus one is 19, type B, 10 minus one is nine, and type C, 40 minus one is 39. So we'll now need to take those, divide them by seven because we are using the closed sampling method. 19 divided by seven is 2.7, nine divided by seven is 1.2, and 39 divided by seven is 5.5. Now we need to add back in our model test that we subtracted in step one. Uh, so 2.7 becomes 3.7, 1.2 is now 2.2, and 5.5 becomes 6.5. Uh, and last, we need to round up. Uh, we always round up, even as you see we have 2.2. We cannot round down to two. You always have to round up. So 3.7 becomes 4, 2.2 becomes 3, 6.5 becomes 7. We now need to add those together and that will give us the minimum number of dwellings that we'll need to test. So 4 plus 3 plus 7 is going to be 14. Uh, so 14 is our minimum number that we'll need to achieve or that we'll need to test in this project uh, to meet the requirements. This slide shows the process for pass failure protocols for herd riders. So there are certain things that need to happen whether the home passes or fails. And this is the process that shows what those things need to happen. So the process starts with the installer. The installer is going to test 100% uh, of their home. So whatever it is that they're installing, they're going to diagnose to make sure that everything they're installing is, tested to st is installed to standard. And they're going to create the CF2R like we talked about earlier. The rider will then come in um, and test 100% of the models, which we talked about. Uh, and then they're going to choose a sampling size and sampling method. So one in five, one in seven, open, close method, doesn't matter. Uh, and they're going to test one, uh, a random house in the sample group. So the rater, you, uh, you randomly pick a house that you want to test and you test it. Nobody's going to tell you which house to test uh, because it's up to you because it would be, uh, it wouldn't be, it would be biased if the installer or the builder told you which house to test. If the first house passes, great, you certify the whole group. Um, you create the CF3Rs for every single home in that group, you give them to the builder, and it's done, okay? If the home fails, you have to report the failure in the registry. That means you have to actually go in there, enter the failure, and then test it again after they fix whatever that needs to be fixed. If the house fails again, um, plus one more house fails, um, so basically once the first house fails, you have to retest it, plus you have to retest one more. Uh, and basically that's to verify that the first failure wasn't just a fluke. So you test the first house, it fails, you test the second house along with retesting the one that originally failed because obviously you have to fix it. If both houses pass, now again you're back on track and you certify the whole group. If the second house fails, at that point you have to test 100% of the homes in that particular group, um, which obviously is going to create delays, probably cost more money, and so forth. Um, so keep that in mind. And keep in mind also that every failure that you encounter, you have to record them in the registry. You don't get the choice of just saying, well, they're just going to fix it on the spot and I'll retest that right away. So there is no need to record a failure. A failure is a failure. So if the house fails, you have to enter the failure in the registry. And this is just a summary of everything that, that I just said. So a HERS verification fails when it does not meet compliance with targets found in the CF1R. All failures have to be reported in the registry. If one house fails, a second house in the same group is tested. If the second house tested, if the second house tested and the group fails, the rater has to conduct 100% testing in the group. And then the builder may elect to modify the CF1R and go through the permit application process to remove non-mandatory HERS verifications. So that's a specific scenario. So basically, let's say that you test something in a house and you just can't get it to pass for whatever reason. It wasn't built properly. Uh, the installer is just not doing a good job in installing whatever it is that the problem is. 
Um, therefore, the builder has the option of going back to the design stage and change the CF1R so that it meets whatever it is that you're finding in the field. Um, they're going to have to go through the permit application process again, but nonetheless, they can do that. If they modify the CF1R and then it passes, that's fine as well. But nonetheless, it's still a failure, which you would still have to record. Sampling for additions and alteration works the same way as new construction, with the only exception that you only use the closed method. So if you remember when we talked about sampling and new construction, you have the 1 in 5 open method, 1 in 7 closed method. In additions and alterations, all you have is the 1 in 7 method. And there's also sub-requirements along with the sampling that we mentioned. So. The main difference is the fact that no model testing is required. If you remember in new construction, you have to do model testing. In addition to alterations, you don't because you don't really have models. You're working on custom homes, specific homes for alterations for HVAC and so forth. So you're not going to have a model. Um, also, it's allowed when the following applies. All the homes in the group must have the same installing subcontractor. And then all the homes in the group must have the same associated HERS measures. The building owner may choose for the field verification and diagnostic testing to be completed for the dwelling unit individually, or alternatively, as part of a designated sample group of dwelling units. That means that the homeowner, unlike new construction where there, where there is no homeowner yet, um, for additions and alterations, the homeowner has the right to say, I want my house to be the tested house in the sample group, or I want my house to be part of the homes in the sample group. Um, if the homes cannot meet sampling requirements, then the HERS rater will have to test 100% of the homes in the sampling group. And again, if you have any questions, contact us through the messaging system or give us a call.